Hello SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded. I'm going to add this to this uh, pyramid playlist, understanding the sciences embedded in not just the Great Pyramid, but the pyramids themselves. I have fantastic knowledge that can be read through geometry and especially metrology, so you have astronomical inf information. And it's a continuation of this long series. So I, uh, in, in basis, a one meter pendulum creates one second, and one meter pendulum needs to be swung no more than 30 degrees, therefore it creates one Egyptian royal cubit. Man is a measure of all things, so three barley corn or three grain per inch. Uh, a foot, English foot, allegedly modern English foot, plus an Egyptian royal cubit, which comes from the one meter, one second pendulum, plus one meter. So foot plus meter plus cubit equals six feet within a tiny fraction of a millimeter. And because of uh, definitions, well, it, you, a couple of hairs is the margin of error there. But the measurement of time, the measurement of man, the measurement of the pyramids and the geometry therein and the information contained therein. So, previously I showed this illustration. Okay, so I might as well just do a quick... Okay, so we have... That, that's one metre. Um, I'll put the links to the videos in there. Actually, this is the one. Stay, where are we? That would be the one. So, one metre. You divide it up, you get 29.527, etc. grains or inches. That's the synodic month. The, it takes, between full moons is 29.53 days on average. It will pass through 29.527. Sun, Earth and Moon relationship. One synodic month is the orbit of the Moon around the Earth in relation to the Sun. 12 synodic months creates a lunar year. 354.37 days on average. 354.33 etc lines or poppy seeds so grains is a way to break down an inch and then we can break down grains into what are called lines or poppy seeds so we have these measurements of built into the measures here one meter from that double vesica pisces uh, i'll put again i'll put the links in the descriptions to the other videos because this, there's a lot of older symbolism in regards to this geometry so we see the synodic month, measurement of length, and measurement of time. Also, if you multiply the diameter of the Earth times 29.527, a synodic month, you also get the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Okay, here's, for instance, this is a Rosicrucian um, illustration, the Sun and the Moon, but this double vesica. Sun, Earth, and Moon, but also include stars. Now, also one meter, a one meter pendulum, again, I've done plenty of videos now on this series but one meter pendulum swung at 30 degrees no more has to be that if you do it above that affects the timing that creates one egyptian royal cubit so one second equals one meter equals one cubit using the same double vesica pisces therefore each one third of the circumference gives us an egyptian royal cubit as um and again this connects to templar cross geometry all these other uh, older symbols Geometry measurement of time, okay, using that same system, now we have 0 0.27340332.5 yards or fathom. This is also important because a sidereal month, one orbit of the moon around the earth in relation to a star is 27.32 days on average. So again, we'll fall within that nice band. Uh, also, the moon rotates once on, on its axis every 27.32 days. And, well, uh, again, I'll put the links, um, I'll go, I'm going to go fast here because, okay, the moon 27.3% the size of the Earth. And also we have the Barry Center uh, beneath there, so I'll put those in there. Okay, now, also in the earlier series, I looked at the geometry of not just the Great Pyramid, but also how it connects to the Giza Pyramids of Khafre and Menkaur, as well as the Red Pyramid and the Bent Pyramid and the... Uh, down in my dome as well as the, the capstone, but okay, this is uh, the squaring the cir circle diagram which comes from the proportions of the pyramid. So the pyramid itself encodes the relative size of the Earth in regards to the Moon. Now in regards to the Moon's orbit, it doesn't orbit around the direct center of the Earth. It orbits at something called the Barry Center. They're pulling on each other, and that would that's where the Barry Center would be. The Barry Center just happens to be, uh, well, again, 27.3%. So overlay the moon on there and the moon itself would describe where the Barry Center is. 
also squaring the circle that's it's all it's all in the pyramids um all the numbers correspond and the geometry for instance the barry center passes um around about 1080 miles the radius of the moon also well 1500 miles within this band that it passes that's pi thousand kilometers matching the proportions of the great pyramid in that pi ratio and so we have all of that there but this also connects to the geometry of the planets guides of weights and measures astronomy geometry three four five triangles such as in Caffrey's pyramid which gives us a dub which it's a vesica pisces it's the same geometry we get three four five triangles okay but what happens well overlay the double vesica And then we get these ratios. These are the same ratios built into the other, other pyramids on the pyramids themselves, but also how the pyramids relate to one another. Everything it has multiple redundancy, has multiple aspects, just to confirm that point. So these pyramids join using the geometry of the pyramids. We get, well, Fibonacci numbers and all of that, but in, especially in regards to that, Fauf, Shesset, architecture, surveying, astronomy, geometry, math, record keeping also guides of weights and measures and so the earth distance from the sun to the earth is called an au and that's one so we'll define from the center to 11 the square is one um, so uh, astronomical units again i'll link in the earlier episodes bode's law very interesting geomet uh, geometry in regards to the distances of the planets they actually predicted planets that were not known at the time which makes it a great theory but uh, not a hypothesis a theory a theory predicts a hypothesis is a question but a theory predicts what is not known and bode's law did that so just so happens that this geometry also marks out the distances from the sun to mercury the sun to venus the sun to the earth and so we have this in there also connects to the moon again links in the description for more of these i'm just doing an intro because this has to do with that same geometry now we can return okay so back to this double vesica the one meter the one second pendulum egyptian raw cubit all these numbers break down now i didn't mention 1093 so if, okay i won't that's some, I've done that in the earlier videos. These are all built into the geometry, the relative distances and sizes of Sun, Earth, and Moon. Also, all of this is built into the pyramid through proportion, but also through measure systems as well. So it's a number that can be measured. It's also for proportion, which doubles it up. Doesn't matter whether you're using feet, meters, cubits. Doesn't matter. The proportions are also in there. It's the geometry of this thing. So now we can just get those down there. Now, just as a reminder, one meter, that's an Egyptian royal cubit. One meter, one second. One Egyptian royal cubit pendulum measures time. So now we have the meter. And each one of these, because we've divided into quarters, would be 0 0.27340332 yards. So let's bring in a yardstick. Even the term yardstick is used for an you know, expression of measurement, but also a yardstick to gauge truth and all, all aspects of things. But so that's one yard now. One yard is three feet. That's 91.44 centimeters, I think. Forget the exact number. But so. All right. So the earth, let's. The yardstick we're going to use, we're using the yardstick and the yardstick in relation to the earth well the moon is 27.3 percent the size of the earth so we have the relative size of the earth and moon meter the yards which is feet or the imperial and also nice link to egyptian royal cubits again earlier we saw that so we have our yardstick okay we'll move that over the sun is center of the sun is at and the Earth. So the an AU is an astronomical unit, as it's called. It's the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. So again, doesn't really matter if you're using AU or not. The, the, the ratio is still there. So, so the yardstick, Sun to the Earth. Okay, so let's bring in Venus. So Venus is along this line, which is 27.34% of one yard. So one minus 
0 0.273, etc. equals 0 0.72659, etc. Venus will pass through 0 0.71844 to 0 0.728213. AU. Venus will pass through exactly this point. This will be an accurate measure during its orbit, elliptical orbits. It's not always the same, but it's true in it at, like with all orbits. But just so happens that uh, so three feet, one foot is twelve inches. One inch is three grain, therefore one yard or thirty-six inches is one hundred and eight grains. And well, Venus also goes through one hundred and eight million kilometers, kilometers, metric, meter. It's a nice touch to it, but now let's bring in Mercury. So the next line would be 0. Point, so we're just, we're just going to minus 0 0.27 point, 0 0.27 three, four, and we get 0 0.4531933535. Mercury passes its closest is to the Sun is 0 0.3075 to 0.466. So once again, Mercury will pass through this point um, again. So we only could really get 27.34% by work beginning with the meter, which gives us a cube, which gives us a second, which gives us 86,400 seconds per day. Multiply that by the maximum visible base. It's all in the pyramid, sun, earth, moon, so relative distances and sizes. All of this geometry and metrology is in the Great Pyramid and also repeated through the proportions of the other grand pyramids of ancient Egypt, not just in themselves, their proportions, but also how their proportions relate to one another, as well as the metrology in there as well. So Mercury, Venus and Earth in regards to the Sun, the meter, the yard or the imperial or the, the foot, and the Egyptian royal cubit, and we have our yardsticks there. So the geometry of the pyramid gives us the planets, the relative scales of the pyramid, Great Pyramid to the other Grand Pyramids gives us the scales, the proportions, the measurements, Sun, Earth, Moon, also the planets, and this measure, you know, um, the, the coincidences just keep piling up, and it is measuring time, it's measuring distance, it's measuring the relationship between them, the relationship between Sun, Earth, Moon and stars, as well as the planets in there as well. Both Hermes, Sheset, Nuafu, Z, Ningashida, guides of weights and measures. Uh, both Sheset, Hermes, Mercury, guides of architecture, guides of weights and measure, guides connected to astronomy and the sciences, and through metrology and geometry and the architecture that they left themselves because the pyramids or the Parthenon or grand cathedrals or even the US state cap uh, US um, capital building or the parliament house here in Australia Brasilia Astana this is still being used um, in this key geometry and the geometricians the esotericians the hermeticists her what is hermeticism it's, it's Hermes what is Hermes Gods of weight is the god of weights, measures, science, maths, geometry, etc. So yard or the imperial system plus the metric system plus the Egyptian royal cubit just gives us a symphony, an unending symphony of coincidence. And it can be measured, it can be verified. Um, unfortunately, for the gatekeepers of you know the the, the type of uh, people who get you know, the, the BBC documentary type of budgets, they absolutely despise this and they won't talk about it. They don't like it uh, to, to talk about the beauty, the harmony of the solar eclipse, and all, which relates to lunar eclipses, the relative size of sun, earth, and moon. This is just forbidden, really. and But it is measurable. It's, it's, it's testable and it's, and it's repeated. And also, uh, well, uh, earlier videos... Uh, the astronomy symbols, so Venus is copper, Mercury is mercury, and uh, iron is Mars, and we also have these, the alchemists who used weights and measure systems which just so happen to correspond to these same numbers repeatedly and consistently and all over time. The metrologists, the geometricians, the her hermeticists are passing on an ancient legacy, and it's beautiful, it's perfect, it's measurable. Have a good one.